In a world already divided by faith and belief, what happens when the leader of the Catholic Church calls for a one-world religion? Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. Pope Francis's recent statements have stirred deep concerns, particularly his remark that some view as a denial of Jesus Christ. Could this signal a new direction for Christianity? Well, before we answer those questions, make sure you take a second to subscribe so we can show the world how many people are on God's side. Now let's get to it. In an era marked by growing calls for global unity, Pope Francis has made a bold and controversial move by declaring the establishment of a one-world religion. This declaration has sparked intense debate and discussion across various religious and secular communities. For some, this appears to be a progressive step toward peace and environmental sustainability, potentially fostering collaboration among diverse faiths to address pressing global issues like climate change and poverty. The idea of uniting under a common spiritual banner resonates with those seeking harmony in an increasingly fragmented world. However, for others, it raises deep concerns about the future of Christianity and the role of prophecy in the modern world. Critics argue that such a declaration dilutes the distinctiveness of the Christian faith and undermines its core teachings. What makes this moment even more jarring is the perception that Pope Francis, through his ecumenical efforts, has denied the central tenets of Christianity by suggesting that all religions lead to God. This assertion not only challenges the uniqueness of Christ's message, but also creates a slippery slope towards relativism, where the truth is subjective and all paths are seen as equally valid. As religious leaders and followers grapple with the implications of this declaration, the question remains, can true spiritual unity be achieved without compromising the essential beliefs that define individual faiths? A wolf in sheep's clothing? Many religious scholars and followers of prophecy have seen Pope Francis's agenda as more than just a call for unity. To them, his statements signal a dangerous spiritual shift that reflects the warnings found in Revelation 13. This chapter of the Bible predicts a world where the masses will follow the beast, leading to a unified but spiritually misled society. What may seem like a harmless agenda, efforts such as the Green Sabbath or climate-related initiatives like Climate Sunday, could, according to these believers, be part of a larger plot to pave the way for the Antichrist. The Antichrist figure, they say, is working diligently to unite the world under a single religious banner. The idea of mandatory rest days, framed as an environmental initiative, may sound innocent enough. But for those who have studied biblical prophecy and the role of the Antichrist during the Dark Ages, this moment is seen as nothing short of an abomination in the sight of God. A world of religions united. There are an estimated 10,000 distinct religions across the world, but nearly all have small, regionally-based followings. The majority of people, almost 75% of the world's population, belong to one of the five major faiths – Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism and Islam. The Book of Revelation, especially chapter 13, paints a picture of a future where all religions, regardless of their current distinctions, will marvel after the beast. In other words, the prophecy suggests that all these faiths will ultimately be united under a single false religious system. This brings us back to Pope Francis, who, according to some, is the Jesuit Pope who is leading this charge toward global religious unity. He is touring the world, meeting with leaders from various faiths and signing documents aimed at ensuring global compliance with his vision of a mandatory rest day, Sunday. But this is more than just a call to rest. Critics argue that it's a calculated move to bring the world under the influence of the Antichrist, as foretold in Revelation chapter 18 verse 3, which says, For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. A global religious shift, the Pope's actions in Asia. In September, Pope Francis embarked on a tour of Asia, making stops in countries like Indonesia, home to 242 million Muslims. 
During this visit, he signed agreements that some see as binding these populations to Vatican policies. The Pope's vision of a one-world religion doesn't stop there. He's also engaged leaders of six major world religions, asking them to join him in this global religious unity. In Singapore, Pope Francis took part in an interreligious gathering that brought together young people of various faiths. At this event, he assured the crowd that all religions are paths to God. But is that true? Can different religions, some of which don't acknowledge Jesus Christ, truly lead to the same God? A great deception. This assertion that all religions are equal paths to God is, according to many Christians, a great deception. For believers in the exclusivity of Jesus as the only way to salvation, the idea that Islam, Hinduism, Judaism and other faiths can also lead to God poses serious theological questions. If these faiths don't point to Jesus as the ultimate source of salvation, can they still show the way to a relationship with the divine? When the Pope of Rome claims that all religions are essentially the same, it raises concerns about the dilution of Christian doctrine. Is this the beginning of a global religious deception that was foretold in the Bible? Many believe it is, and they argue that young people of various faiths are being prepared and shaped for this deception. The Washington Times recently reported that Pope Francis has faced criticism from some religious leaders in the United States for his comments. According to the Christian Post, during an interfaith gathering in Singapore, the Pope went off script emphasizing that different faiths serve as languages leading to the same divine truth. This concept of religious pluralism, while appealing to some, has caused many to question whether the Pope is compromising core Christian beliefs in favor of global religious unity. Critics fear that this approach could lead to a watering down of essential doctrines, blurring the lines between truth and falsehood. As the world becomes more interconnected, the challenge remains. How can believers uphold their convictions while engaging in meaningful dialogue with those of different faiths? The answer may lie in a return to biblical principles that prioritize truth over the pursuit of an uneasy harmony. The healing of the prophetic wound. The push for unity is not new. Pope Francis has long advocated for the world to unite in the name of peace and environmental preservation. He has frequently spoken of the need to overcome division, which he refers to as a wound in the body of Christ. However, critics point out that the book of Revelation also speaks of a wound, the deadly wound of the Antichrist which is said to have been healed. The only way, according to biblical prophecy, for this prophetic wound to be healed fully is for the papacy to regain the power it lost during the Dark Ages, a power that included the persecution of those who opposed its authority. The Pope's emphasis on unity is, for some, a thinly veiled attempt to re-establish this power and bring the world under the control of a single religious system. But not all unity is good. As Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 51, Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. True unity, according to biblical teachings, cannot come at the expense of truth. Unity that requires the forsaking of Jesus Christ and the commandments of God is not unity from God, but an abomination. The Jesuit Agenda – Crushing Protestantism Pope Francis's Jesuit background is key to understanding his agenda. The Jesuits, an order within the Catholic Church, have long been associated with efforts to crush Protestantism. According to many scholars of prophecy, the ultimate goal of the Jesuit order is to bring all religions under the authority of the papacy. While the Pope speaks of peace and unity, critics argue that his true aim is to destroy the gospel of Jesus Christ and replace it with a universalist gospel that serves the interests of Rome. This Jesuit influence is not only seen within the Catholic Church, but is also spread to other Christian denominations. Many Baptist churches, megachurches and evangelical congregations have adopted the ecumenical philosophy of the Pope. This philosophy teaches that all religions are valid paths to God, a belief that runs contrary to the teachings of the Bible. A false peace. Throughout history, humanity has sought peace. Nations are now willing to submit to the Pope of Rome, seeing him as a potential saviour who can provide solutions to the world's problems. But there is a great danger in seeking peace apart from the commandments of God. As the prophet Ezekiel warned, destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Likewise, the Apostle Paul wrote in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, 
then sudden destruction cometh upon them. The ecumenical movement led by Pope Francis is committed to spreading a false religious system that will never lead to salvation. Instead, it will leave people trapped in spiritual confusion or Babylon as described in the book of Revelation. A call to remain faithful. As the world moves closer to the fulfillment of end time prophecies, it is critical for believers to remain faithful to the teachings of the Bible. The call to unite under a single religious system is a clear sign of the coming of end times. Revelation 14, which contains the three angels as messengers, stands in direct opposition to the agenda of Rome. The Antichrist is working tirelessly to unite the world against the God of heaven, but God is calling his people to come out of Babylon and remain faithful to him. The Bible-believing, commandment-keeping remnant must now bow to the devil's deception. It's time to wake up and stand firm in the truth of God's word. As persecution increases and the world falls deeper into spiritual confusion, those who follow Jesus Christ must hold fast to their faith, even unto death. The decision is yours. Dear friends, the decision is yours to make. Will you bow down to the Antichrist and join the global movement of deception, or will you remain faithful to Jesus Christ and the commandments of God? The future of your soul hangs in the balance. The time to act is now. Stand firm and don't fall for the lies of the enemy. Let's remain faithful to the end, even if it means enduring persecution for the sake of Christ. If you made it all the way to this part in the video, I have a special offer for you. Do you want early access to our most exclusive content? Well, we have the members area just for you. There's already hundreds of people inside and you could be the next one. Plus you get a really cool badge beside your name to show your dedication. If you wanna learn more, click on the link on the left of your screen or the link in the pinned comment.